Okay, we're still on the performance monitor here. And I want to talk about data collector sets. And then within those data collector sets, we want to look at performance counters. So let's create a data collector sets that, that's a custom one. So I'm going to go to user define. I'm going to right click on user define and say new data collector set. Now I'm going to reproduce what we'll be doing in the lab in our classroom this week. So I'll call this one Lab 8. And I could create this from a template or I could create it manually from the beginning. I'll go ahead and create it from a template. I'll click Next. And as a template, I can use either the basic set or the system performance set. I'm going to use the basic set. That's a set that's already in the system. And we'll just eliminate what's in there and then create our own out of it. So I'll go ahead and click Next here and this is what it's going to be called and where it will be found and I'll click Next again. We can choose the default user or I could run as somebody else if I wanted to and I'm going to go ahead and say Save as Close. I could go ahead and go right to the properties here but I'm going to go ahead and click Save and Close. Now I'm going to go down to the properties for this Lab 8 uh, collector set right here and I'm going to set the stop condition. Now, right, it, right now it's set to only run for one minute. And I'm going to set, a, set it to run for four minutes. Uh, I could set this for longer if I want, but one warning is we don't want to run these things very long because they do tax the system quite a bit. And uh, so it's going to slow everybody down if you're in a work environment. I'll click OK on that. Now I'm going to go over to the performance counters and this is where I will set up the performance counters that I want to run on this. So I'm going to right click and go to properties on the performance counters. We already have a bunch of performance counters in this. Uh, as a matter of fact we have all of the processor performance counters. In fact if I click add here we go you'll see all the processor performance counters if I click this down arrow here all of these are currently in my report and I don't want all of these because it's going to make it a really messy chart by the time I'm done. So I'm just going to back up here and get rid of that. And I'm going to add my own counters. I'll be transferring a file. I'll be downloading a file and I want to see the impact on my system when I do that. So I'm going to go up to physical disk and let's say that I want to see the disk read bytes per second and the disk write bytes per second and then the overall disk bytes per second. So I'll add those three counters and I'll click OK. The interval is set for every one second so it will be adding this data looking at that and adding the data for these three counters every second. If I were going to run this over, say, an all-day thing, then I would make it maybe once every five minutes or once every 15 minutes or something like that. But I'm only going to run it for four minutes, so we'll collect it every second for that four-minute period of time. And I'll click OK. All right, now it's time to run it. So I'm going to right-click on this now and say Start. Now I'm going to head over to a website where I can download that information. I'm going to MajorGeeks.com. These guys are really cool. They look for software. They vet that software to make sure it's safe. And then they put it up here and they review it. Uh, so I'm going to go down to System Tools on their site. And maybe down to Benchmarking because I want a fairly small file. And I happen to know that this fur mark down here is, is pretty small. It's only 13.1 megabytes, so I'll go ahead and download that one. I'll download it from the Major Geek site. And it should ask me here where I want to put it. I'll put it on my desktop and save it. And there it is. It's all downloaded. So now let's go back and let's stop my collector set from running. And we're ready to take a look at it. So I'm going to go down to Reports, the User Defined Reports for Lab 8. 
and I only have one report here. If I click on it, I'll get a report that is in numeric form, so I can look at things like the CPU and processes and so on, and I can see whatever information I have about uh, this, what just occurred on the system. However, I want a graphical look, so I'm going to right click on this and go to View and then Performance Monitor. Now I'm going to get an error message when I do this, but I'm not going to worry about it. In the lab, I'll put how you can get around this if you want, but it's only going to come up once and it's going to work after that just fine. And in fact, it'll work anyway. So you can just ignore this error. And so here we go. Here's the information that we had. Now I can hide these various things and show these various things. Let's say that this uh, red one's kind of in my way. So I'll just right click on that and I will say hide that uh, counter. And now I can see a green one and a blue one. Let's hide the green one here. And now I can clearly see the blue one and that one is the disk write bytes per second. So this is the information about when I wrote the information to my disk. Uh, this one, this red one here, I'll show it again. It was when I was reading information from the disk and then this green one here, I'll show that one, which is twice as high is because that's the total bytes per second. And so that's why it's twice as high as each of these. It's because the read and the write were equal. And then this is double that height. This little section right here is what was going on when I was actually doing that writing to the disk. So you can see here how I can see when something was occurring that was of interest and then I could go in and analyze that period of time and see what's going on. So that's how performance monitoring works but again be careful about this because it does tax the system during that time that you're collecting the data.